Did you know that women are an asset? According to the Global Report of Gender Gap 2017 created by the World Economic Forum, um, women are actually an asset that is not utilized. It's underutilized when it comes to business. Today, we have women that are doing great things. And who is noticing them? Well, it's quite questioning. Good question, why? Is it that women don't have skills? Are they not educated? And what can we really do to turn this around? Hello, my name is Letricia Pamba, and I will be the host of this interview. Mwananchi Communications Limited, under its business flagship, The Citizen, is bringing to you the Citizen Rising Woman Initiative with the aim to empower and inspire women leaders in our society. I am joined by a brilliant woman who is at the core, at the heart of a big company, a successful one in Tanzania. And her name is Renata Ndege, and she is the Chief Financial Officer of Tanesco. Welcome, Renata. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad that you're here, mm -hmm. and I would like to applaud you for all that you have been doing. Thank you very much. Uh, you've been doing a great job. Uh, as we can see behind me, there is a couple of awards, and mm -hmm. it's all because of your efforts. Mm -hmm. I applaud you. Thank you. Very well, much. I would like to know, I'm interested to know about your story. So, what has it been like until you're at, at this place today? Okay, uh, I should start uh, after graduating. Um, I joined the Tanzania Breweries Companies as a very junior employee, as just an accountant trainee. That is where my career path started from there. Uh, thereafter, I worked there about four years as accountant trainee. Thereafter, I became normal accountant, financial accountant, management accountant. From there, I joined the Contractors Registration Board. There, I joined as chief chief accountant. Um, and there I worked almost seven years as chief accountant. From there and then I uh, joined the road fund board as director of finance. That is where now I started to become yeah. the top position. From there that is where now I'm here as chief financial officer. But it was like, uh, it was not easy. Yeah, I had to work very hard to make sure because uh, it was my dream to become at the top. Yeah, wow. so I had to work very hard to make sure I made it. Yeah, yeah. well, that is quite intriguing because you had this dream. You told me it's your dream. So, is this a childhood dream? Or was it something that you had since you were young? You're like, I want to be at the top. I can't say it was a childhood. No, it became when. After graduating, when I was started working, yeah. that is where I said, no, I need to be somewhere. I don't want to remain as a junior. Yeah. So I had also to make sure I joined different courses, um, even like masters for taxation, so that at least uh, I become at the top. Well, I could say that you have set a high standard, a high bar for women out there. You know, for you to take this role, to be able to achieve all this and to be able to be recognized is something that is very rare in the country. Well, knowing that um, actually there are very few women that reach at the top management roles. So does mentorship play any role in you reaching where you are today? Of course, it plays a lot because you can't work alone and made to the top. You need someone behind you to push you. I can say one of them is my husband. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it's not at, at the office, but at home. He's always telling me you have to uh, trust yourself, you have to be, believe yourself, you have to work hard, you know. He's, yeah, yeah he's all, he has always been there supporting me. You know, you, for the top, to be at the top, especially for us women. We have a lot to do at home. Yeah. So it is very difficult to work at the same time to take you care. Really yeah, yeah. So you know, in order for women at least to, to be in this position, you need a lot of support from your partner. Yeah. And apart from that, at the work, the work I used to work at TBL, the Road Fund, the CRB, my bosses, they used to encourage me and tell me, you can do it, Renato, you can do it. So that is the 
thing which supported me up to this level. Yeah, the role of a CFO, I could personally say that it's the heart of a company. You know, you're running all of the money. If something goes wrong with you, everything goes down. Everything doesn't matter. They say, um, they say CFO is actually the real boss. CFO is the boss, you know? You deal with everything. You even deal with the boss, right? So you being a woman, and being a CFO, you're sitting at the table, right? You have this, uh, you have this opportunity to make quite decisions, quite big decisions for Tanesco, okay? So, are there any challenges that you've met, specifically maybe because you're a woman? You know, it's not easy to trust women when it comes to these roles, especially when it comes to you know top management roles. But you're here today. Are there challenges that you had you had to pass through going through where you are today? Actually, through my career, sincerely, I've never encountered, I encountered that difficult situation. Uh, and the good thing, men, they tend to trust women, especially when you're dealing with the money. With the money. <laughs> <laughs> so to my position, I can't say I have a very difficult situation or something that, that I can tell you that it is a challenge, that oh, it's it's obstacle for me to... Uh, in this position, actually, I don't have. So you've been here, you spoke about having that support system. Uh, are you creating any support system within the company to make sure that women are, are rising up? You know, many women are joining, I believe, and young yes. girls, and maybe they have aspirations, or even they don't, and you're like, hey, why are you not having aspirations? You should aim, you should always aim higher. So do you do anything to ensure that more girls want to get higher, and those that want to get higher, they actually get that opportunity? Yeah. It's the thing, you know, this is also the industry which is mainly dominated, as you know, especially for engineering part. So there are very few women in the engineering uh, sector. sector. But at least in the supporting sector, like as accountants, HR, uh, procurement, you might find uh, a lot of women in that, in that area. And always, like accountant, always I tell them, you have to, to trust yourself, have a confidence, and uh, make sure you take the job. And sometimes I tell them, when you see that your, your boss likes to give you a, a lot of job, you should be happy. Because some of them, they say, why are you always me? I'm telling them, this is good for you. Because uh, the boss is trusting you and it gives you uh, a path to, to go through the, yeah. to the top. So I always encourage them. And sometimes when there's a chance for them to be promoted, always I take that chance to promote yeah. them. Yeah. Well, that is a very good initiative, but talking about trust, I would like to take you to the PR of Tanesco, who speaks about being entrusted and about women at the top management, management roles. We'll be right back. Let's listen to her. Um, my name is Johari Kachwamba. I'm uh, the manager for public relations. Okay. As the public relations, I imagine that you're the face of this company. How does that impact you and your whole life and the company in general, being a woman and you know, being the face and the brand of the company? Um, uh, I believe it's a very um, important role in the institution. And uh, being a woman, um, it, it gives a bit of responsibility because even the product intends um, to easen up life for women. Um, as you, you reach more women uh, in the energy aspect, that means uh, you're giving them more time to do other things uh, than going to, to search for charcoal, I mean for firewood, but also spending a lot of time using charcoal. So if you easen up uh, life for women, that means you're making a difference. Exactly. Oh, thank you for making the difference to women out there. So gender diversity among leaders is, a, is proven to be a, a concrete business uh, with, business, with business benefits, right? So why do you think companies still don't invest so much in females? And what are the challenges that females are passing through when it comes to becoming leaders, uh, women leaders in companies? Um, I think uh, it, it starts with uh, the family setup that we are, we are groomed to be who, that's where it starts. Uh, if women were groomed uh, to be leaders from the family, uh, family level, 
this could have been so much of a different now because you start struggling and putting a lot of efforts when you are at least in secondary school or when you are in the university. But when you are in the family, uh, it's the boys that are given more voice and uh, even the, the stereotypes start in the, in, the, in the family setup. So the role that boys are given are so different from what we are given as girls when we are, we are at home. Yeah. So how can we really address this issue of gender equality, uh, especially at work or in leadership? How can we address this issue? What should be done and what should we females done? And you as the PR of this company, what are you doing to ensure that there is gender equality in the company? I think every woman, um, even men, it's not just uh, for, for us to, to, to change the narrative. Even men should look for all the opportunities that can be taken up to help from the, the, the girls since women, since, uh, since we are still girls to, to the level of women, all opportunities that will allow um, uh, the setup to, to change and give women more opportunities. For example, in my role as a peer, I have what we call um, managing the CSR budget, uh, corporate social responsibilities. So I also uh, focus more on investing on the girls and women. I'll give you a very good example. We have, uh, we have hospitals in all our plants that are in the isolation places. And we give uh, free health services to, to the rural people around these um, plants. And the, most, the beneficiaries are most women and children. So that is even um, a very good uh, impact in the, in the area. But also um, when we have uh, requests that is relating to, to giving women opportunities or girls. We do a number of investment. Currently, we, we, we sponsored girls in science. They are called uh, think tank, Vidyana think tanks, but it's intended to, to groom girls uh, to, 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 to engage in the science subjects. So it's very important for us as a scientific institution as well to invest in them because if you look at the trend, we, the, the company have about 20% um, of women and it has been on the same rank for years, like 19, 20, 20, 22. But we want to change that and that's why we also want to invest in the girls, especially on the, in the science for, for us being an, a scientific institution. We want to see girls making a difference. Nice. So one last question. So why do you think it's very important to invest in females, especially young girls, because they're the females of tomorrow. We want these females to, you know, aim higher, become bigger people in life. Why is it important for us to invest in women? As you say, you people are investing in young girls and women. Why is it important to do that? Um, I believe women are good decision makers. <laughs> uh, yes. So. If women are given a bigger role, I believe they'll make very good decisions from the family level, as I said. Even for us as a nation, they will do make a difference. But also, looking at the NBS data, women, are, the number is bigger than men. So if our number is bigger, why aren't we in the number as well? What, what does, it, does it show in the, in the number? that women have opportunities as well or have uh, the, the, the leadership role. I think it's fair because being um, bigger in number as women, I think it's also important for this to reflect in the leadership role. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much for sitting with us. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Those are quite intriguing words. So coming back to you, how many people are sitting at the board of Tanesco right now and how many of them are women? Board of Directors of Management. The XCOM. The XCOM. The XCOM. Yes, Board including executive, executive women. Yes. Yeah, three of us. Okay. Yeah. Three women. Yeah. Well, three women out of how many people? Out of 20. Out of because that is board plus management. Okay, so board plus management is three out of 20. That is quite a small number. Um, I would like to say uh, women should be given these chances more. So what is the company doing to increase more women when it comes to those kind of roles? The good thing about Tanesco is the equal opportunity for all. Yeah. 
and uh, women are given a lot of chance especially like we have a lot of managers now women, women's managers okay. women, they, yeah we have a so lot of them now they are rising up so we hope that in the future they will become also part of management be yeah. because in order for, for you to become at the top you have to step by step to grow step by step True. so we have managers who are also women so we know Tanesco is equal opportunity the, the chances are there for women as long you work hard so the women, they can get chance. So when we're trying to achieve this eco future where we have more females in leadership, what do you think can be done by our companies, by the government, but also by ourselves? Because I also believe that for a woman to reach at the top, it also begins with themselves. It began with you. You wanted, you wanted it, so you went for it. Could it be that maybe some females, they're scared of doing it or something? So what can we do? What can other entities do, the stakeholders do, but also what can we meet women do to take the initiative to be at the top management roles? I think this one is start with yourself. Like you are saying, you have to have your own initiative yeah. to make sure that you move forward. So, and the, the culture also, you know, for Tanz especially with Tanzania, the culture also is uh, the way we are raised up. Yeah. Women are supposed, women are supposed, you are, you are a girl, you are, you know, yeah, you have to, you yeah, yeah, you can't be front in everything, you know. So we become very shy and even the confidence is not that much, you know. So I can say it should start from the, the person itself, yourself to make sure that you, you work hard. You study, make sure you have a good education, so that at least you can raise up. And for the, like, like I said, men should also give a chance to the women. Because there the, are the, the many that are the ones who are selecting who should be there. Yes. So they should give us also a chance to have that position. Yeah. Yeah. They should play a role as men to ensure yeah, that they to, bring in sure more they, women. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to confidence. She spoke something about having confidence, but did you know that we also have confident people, confident women in this field? And we're going to see an engineer who is a very confident woman, and shortly you're going to know her story and what she does. I'm with engineer Florence Wangombe, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she does here at UNESCO. Welcome, engineer Florence. Thank you, madam. It's been a pleasure having you here with me. Uh, I'd like to know, tell us a little bit about you and what you do here at Tanesco. What is your position? Okay, thank you for the good question. Uh, as we have heard, I am engineer Florence Gwangombe, working with Tanesco as manager projects for transmission and distribution. And uh, Projects department is implementing uh, many projects which are, are aiming at supporting the government visions of having a reliable and uh, adequate electricity in our country. Wow, that is a very huge responsibility, I suppose. Our for what you don't know, what we're looking here behind us, all this has been done under her supervision. So can you tell us, what is this? What is this okay. project? Thank you. As I've already said, that uh, projects department is undertaking many projects. And me as a manager projects for transmission and distribution, I'm responsible in supervising several projects, including this one, strategic projects, including even the hydropower project, yeah. uh, Julius Nyerere hydropower project. As you are all aware that uh, Tanzania government is developing a very big hydropower project along the Fiji River, the Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project. Power evacuation from this plant is a must. And uh, who is responsible of doing evacuation of power from this plant? It is Tanesco. Tanesco under the projects department and I'm the supervisor of this power evacuation project. We will have two routes from the power plant. One route will be from Julius Nyelele to Chalinze, 160 kilometers. And then at Chalinze, the line will spread towards Daslam, Kinyerez. At this area, it will be 93 kilometers. And then from Chalinze, 
to the other side to Dodoma it will be 345 kilometers but not all that and then from also from the plant we will have another route which will come to this area but then now it will pass via Kibiti which will be a total of 370 kilometers together with these transmission lines we will also implement uh, associated substations two big substations one will be at Chalinze Chalinze at Chalinze there will be a very big substation it will be the biggest substation in our country and that substation will be a hub of, of, because it will have the lines coming from Nyerere some lines will go to Dodoma and then from Dodoma it, it will spread towards the southern part and northern part to Arusha maybe exported it to Kenya and other countries and then to Mbea and then exporting it to the southern part. Yeah. So this has been uh, such a huge work. It's a huge job that you have been given, you're entrusted to. And you are a woman. How long have you been doing this first? Okay. This is my 29th year working with Tanesco. Wow, your 29th year. Yes. So what challenges has it been, you know, you being a woman, for someone or the company to trust you as a woman that you can handle all of this and much more. How has it been for you? Has it been challenging? What are the challenges that you have faced and how did you uh, overcome those challenges? Okay, thank you. The challenges are always there, but then when you get challenges, it means you get more opportunities to learn new things and then to tackle new things. When implementing this project, because I've just explained just one project, but then there are several projects yeah. like this uh, SGR project, this switchyard over there, it is for standard gauge railway. As you all okay. know, that uh, uh, our government is also uh, implementing standard gauge railway, and this uh, SGR will require electricity to transport it tra its, its trains. Yeah. Therefore, it is a must that. It, there should be a reliable electricity for, for feeding the, the, the trains. And um, we have constructed a 160 kilometers transmission line from this area here. The switchyard is there. And then on the way from here to Morogoro, and then on the way, there are four traction power substations of Tanzania Railway Corporation. From those four points, um, they will take electricity from this dedicated line and then they will feed the, their trains. But then this is just one part. Yeah. Phase two of SDR project is uh, we are constructing um, 414 kilometers of transmission line from Morogoro to Dodoma. And there between Morogoro and Dodoma, there are seven um, traction power substation of TRC, which will receive power from this dedicated line from here. Thank you so much, Engineer Flores. You have been a, a very good example of women that can make it. And she is a living example that you can do anything if you put your mind into it. And be that person that can empower women, but be that woman that can take initiative to become a leader. Women can do it. Quite intriguing responsibilities given to one woman, but who has made it happen? Yet again, just like the CFO right here who is making things happen. So how does it make you feel when women are given uh, these bigger roles? bigger parts to play when it comes to Tanexco. We have seen our uh, engineer Florence who has been given a much bigger role to play and she's making it happen, doing it for 29 years and I was like, wow, what is, this, what is the trick behind? What do you all have that we don't have maybe? What are the skills that you learned? Could you give us uh, some tips of reaching at the top? <laughs> There's Secret nothing. Magic, there's yeah. nothing special <laughs> that you can say. I can say. I can give you the tips that it's. The only thing you can do is there are things that you need when you need to work. Yeah. The education, that the qualities that is supposed to be in that position, and you say soft skills and hard skills. So soft skills like uh, you need to know how to be a part of the team, to be part of the teamwork. You need to be hard worker, you need to be trustful, ethical stuff, and also you need to have that education or qualities that you're supposed to have in that position. 
and uh, even the relationship with your boss, your subordinates, that also matters a lot because sometimes you might have a very good education, yeah. qualified, but the soft skills part, you are not good at it. So in order to have, you need to have a package for you to grow better. But also, uh, you need also support because, as I said, men are the ones who are dominating the, the position. So they also need to trust you that you can do it. Yeah, that's what I can say. Let's <laughs> talk to your younger self. Uh, your younger self is going to be the last question that I'm going to ask. Uh, let's talk to your younger self. Think of yourself. Picture yourself. You're 15 years old. <laughs> what would you advise yourself, knowing what you know today, at this position that you are today? What would you advise your younger self? <laughs> Talk to her. Uh, uh, what I'll say to her, uh, she should be. Uh, you know, it's not the matter of education, I know. So there are some who are even a standard seven student, even maybe from four, but they are making it. Yeah. Good behavior. Behavior is very important. You have to behave. For any girl, you have to behave. And that will give you a sense of responsibility. Yeah. And then you will know, I have to study hard, I have to make sure I do this. But if you are not, uh, you are not in a good behavior, then you start, you do not care, you know, everything will be, and you start even doing other things which I cannot say in the camera. <laughs> but to me, you have to be a good girl. Normally I tell them, be a good girl. When, yeah. Once you're a good girl, everything will be, will fall, will be your, yeah, and you have to trust God, you have to, yeah. That is quite a story from Miss Renata, who sat with us, speaking about her story, her journey, and until she became the CFO of Tenesco. We've also seen uh, the engineer, Engineer Florence, but we, we've also listened to the PR of Tenesco, and they all have quite stories to tell. But what I learned is that they have been entrusted to do what they're supposed to do, and they are actually killing it. Monanchi Communications Limited is bringing the Citizen Rising Movement that is coming to you on March 8th and it will be coming live on Monanchi Digital and Clouds Plus. Do not miss but also don't miss the copies of the Citizen telling you stories, different stories of various women that are women in leadership, that are rising women, that are empowered women or still women that are inspiring to the society.